In this video series, we're making this low poly well, and in this video, we're making the roof tiles. Check the playlist in the description for previous videos. Okay, so here's what we got up to last time, and we'll work on the roof. So we'll build one tile and then duplicate it, very similar to what we did with the stones at the bottom. Now you might want to challenge yourself. If you look at the roof tiles, you can kind of see how they've been created. So you could challenge yourself to make those. Don't worry about the curviness of this. We'll sort that out later. Just make them fairly flat, lying on top of each other like so. And again, don't worry about overlap. You can sometimes even see some popping through each other, but you hardly notice it because it's supposed to be kind of lumpy and higgledy-biggledy. So pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so I'll work in front view just for now and shift right click to this position, shift A to add, and let's add a cube. I'll scale this down. So it's roughly the right size from top view. Let's get a front view and scale it in the Z. And that's probably the right sort of size. I'll scale in the Y as well, so it's a little bit longer and we're about there. Just go to top view and see how we're looking. Notice that my scale is out now. So it's a good idea to apply the scale. So control A, apply the scale. And it's all set to one. Now I can go into edit mode and start editing this. So tab into edit mode, a couple of loop cuts down the middle here, I think will help. And then we can change the shape a little bit. Maybe just bring those up. So there's a bit of curve to the tile. It's entirely up to you really how you want to make the tiles. I might select the edge at the end here. So two to go to edge mode, select that edge and control B to bevel, just so there's a bit of variation. And I'll select everything, go to vertex mode, mesh, and then transform, randomize. And again, I've got to change this down to something like 0 0.01. So there's a bit of randomness to it, maybe a little bit more than that. And I think that looks quite good. So now I can go to object mode. I'll duplicate this one in the X axis, move that across and just change the shape. So maybe I'll go in and bevel this edge here. So control B to bevel. Now this is a different way of creating a split. I've created extra faces here. I can delete these faces. So actually delete the faces like so. And we've got this hole in our mesh now. If I select this end edge here and press F to fill, it knows to fill the face in next to it. And I can press F to fill again, and it will fill that face in. If for any reason that doesn't work, you can select two opposite edges and F to fill, and Blender knows exactly what to fill in, just in case Blender doesn't quite understand which way to fill. So I'll fill that in again. And this one I'll Go to top view and G to grab and create a kind of split like this, which I think is interesting. I'll vary the shape a little bit more. So into wireframe mode and let's just move these around, make this tile a little bit thinner, move it at the back there as well. And we've got a different looking tile. I'll select the first one because this one won't have a split. Shift D and then I'll bring it out this way and edit the shape slightly into edit mode and just move it around Perhaps I'll bring that back and cross like this. I'll create one more with a split, so Shift D and then X. But this one, I'll just make the split much smaller and bring it across to here. It's a bit similar across this side, I think, so I'll bring that down. Something like this. So I've got four different tiles there. That should work nicely. So now's a good time to catch up with me and create your own four tiles. So now I can start piling them on top of each other. Now my scene's getting a little bit confusing and complicated. I'm just going to press Alt Z to go back to object mode and start putting some of these into a collection. So I'll select these ones, move to new collection and call them tile one, because I may want to join them together and do some spares later on, we'll see. At the moment, I think all my objects like the wood is in the stone base collection because that was the last object I had selected when I added the stone base. So I need to select those objects, make sure I've only got those. You can control box select to deselect anything if you need to, and shift box select to add to your selection. I'll press M to move to new collection, new collection and frame. In fact, with my middle object, the mirror, I might use that for the tiles as well. So I'll move that back into the collection. So it's just in the main collection collection, if that makes sense, just so I can find it easily. Okay, so let's start duplicating these and placing them on top of each other. I'll deselect my empty at the back, and if I change the transform pivot point, that's up the top middle here, to individual origins, I can rotate them all by their individual origins. I'll show you what that looks like. So if I press R now, they will rotate slightly like so. And that's a nice easy way to get them all at the same angle. Now I can start putting them on top of each other. And again, a little bit of overlap is absolutely fine. A little bit of variation as well is good. 
So we've got them on top of each other. What I might do here, if I go to top view and select all my objects, you can also use a randomization here as well. If I go under object transform and then randomize transform, nothing happens initially, but you can change the location, let's say of the X. So just a little bit of variation there, maybe the Y, so they move in and out a little bit but just minor amounts, maybe even the Z, so they're up and down a little bit as well. So it goes X, Y, Z. I don't know why they don't have that on the scale, but let's change the scale slightly as well. So slightly in the X would be good, and the Y as well, I think. Maybe the Y, actually not quite that much, but a, around about there looks interesting, I would say. Probably not so much in the Z, but just a little bit of variation there is good. Okay, now I can start copying these. I just select those and deselect the ones in the back. Shift D, then X. I'm just going to rotate these very slightly by the individual origin still. I've still got that selected. And let's start moving these about. I'll move this one to the end, in fact, and just jiggle them about a bit. I think as well, I'm going to randomize them in the rotation. So object transform, randomize. And I'll just undo any of these changes here and look at the rotation a little bit. So that's the X rotation. So that's going across here, the Y rotation a little bit as well, but the Z rotation is what I want the most, I think, just so it's got a bit more higgledy biggledyness to it. That's good. You can select the objects in the background and press H to hide or hide them in the collections over here, but I kind of want to see them so I know how far along I'm going, but I'll hide them for now and then duplicate a few and then bring those back. So Alt H is to unhide as it were. And I'll probably go up to around about there, I think. Let's see what sort of variation we have. That looks quite good. I'm just gonna add a bit of my own variation really, just so it's a little bit more random than the random modifier. And I think that looks good. Okay, so we've got one row just there. I'll select those and let's line them up. I'll go to side view. And you want to line them up along the roof just here. Might bring them up a little bit. Shift D to duplicate. Now they're going to be exactly the same this row, aren't they? So I might just delete one from the end, select them all, deselect anything I don't want, and move them across a little bit. Well, I've got these here as well, so just watch out for that. So I'll move them across, and then select these two here. Shift D, move those across. Looks a little bit wobbly at the moment, so I just need to adjust these. That looks good. I probably don't need this one at the end here, actually. In fact, I don't need these two, do I? There we go. Line that up a little bit more. So a little bit of adjusting, and we're there. Okay, I'll take the bottom row. Again, just deselect anything you don't need, and then I'll go to side view. Slightly more efficient ways of modeling, to be fair. I can attach these all to an empty and move them around together, but I'm just doing it the nice, easy way for now. So I'm just moving these into position, overlapping each other like this. And again, I'm not worried too much about overlap. It's absolutely fine. It won't cause us any problems with rendering or even in a game engine. You can optimize this for game engines by joining them all together and taking out any overlap and so forth, but it's really as unnecessary these days. Okay, so I've got all those roof tiles just at the top there, which is great. So again, make sure you're caught up with me and that you've created one side of tiles. Now we want to duplicate them to the other side. I'll just tidy up in the middle here a little bit. So you can select one and add a mirror. So across the modifiers, type in mirror, add a mirror. Of course, it's mirroring on itself, so it's object origin there. If I turn the X off, you can kind of see that there. But I want to use my mirror object of the mirror empty just there. Now that's going across the X axis at the moment, but we want to change that to the Y axis. And it jumps to the other side. And then we want to copy the modifier to all the other ones. I'll just get rid of these and make sure this one here is the active object. Control L, copy modifiers, and they all jump to the other side. And that's great. Now you might want to do a little bit of adaption here, maybe to the top. If we need to make that a little bit bigger, like so. And just generally do a little bit of adaption, add some loop cuts if you need to. And I think that's looking quite nice. Now what I did for my model was to create a slightly sagging roof. This is something you don't have to follow along with if you're not too worried about it, but it's a really interesting modeling technique. What we do is if I press shift right click to move my 3D cursor here, shift A to add, we can add what's called a lattice. 
So if I add that, I'll go to side view and just scale that in the Y, rotate it and line it up with my tiles. So trying to get it surrounding my tiles basically. So somewhere around about here to front view, scale in the X and bring that out here. Now over on the right hand side here, we have some lattice data and the resolution in the U, V and W, which is a little bit confusing, but they're sort of like the local X, Y, and Z. And you can easily find out which ones they are just by clicking the number to the side. We want about four going across. So that's six, I should say, but four extra cuts. And for the V, so that's not the V, it's the W going up the middle there. That's what I want. A couple going that way as well. And what I'll be able to do is attach these tiles to the lattice and just to form the lattice to change their shape and I can make it sag nice and easily. We do that in a similar way. So if I select this tile here, I can go to my modifiers and this is as well as the mirror modifier. I can add a modifier and type in lattice and there's the lattice under deform as you can imagine. I can then choose the lattice object by using my picker, choose this lattice object here. Now currently it's only on that one tile, but if I now go into the lattice and go into edit mode and let's say grab this, you can see it's moving around my tile. So the tile is adapting to the lattice shape, which is really useful. So what I want to do is back into object mode, select my original tile. So that will be the active object when I box select the other ones. So shift box select the other ones. Let's get rid of the wooden pieces here. So that's control box selecting those. Now I've got them all selected and this one last. So it's the active object, control L, copy modifiers. Now they're all attached to the lattice. And what I can do is go into the lattice now. I'll go to side view, into edit mode, x-ray mode, and I can bring this down like so. We can actually use proportional edit here as well. That's this button here. So if I click on this and press G to grab, you can see my circle of influence. And when I press G to grab to bring that down, it's got an influence away from the middle of the circle there. So that's quite useful. I can bring that down like so. And that looks quite nice. I'll just go back to solid mode with Alt Z. So you can see that this piece of wood is actually going through this object. So we actually want to add the lattice form to this wood as well. That will be helpful. And maybe some of the other pieces of wood around it just on the outside of this frame. So I'll go back into object mode, select that piece of wood. For this one, I can actually copy the modifier from here. So control L, copy modifiers. But these ones have an extra mirror across the middle. I suppose to make it easier, I can copy the modifier, control L, copy modifier, and just add the X axis to it. Oh, but make sure I've actually got that one selected and add the X axis and you can see it across the other side there. This one as well, I'll copy the modifier from this one that I changed the X axis to. Hopefully I'm making sense with this. So copy modifiers and you can see it's using that lattice to form. So the tiles are now not going through the frame and we've got a sort of sagging roof there, which I think works really nicely. So that's really great. And we've got our roof in. So as always, make sure you've caught up with me and that you've saved your work ready for next time. And remember to check the playlist in the description for the next videos.